The prayers of Queen Kunti <coughs> is a part of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, eighth chapter. This chapter is describing how Krishna was about to leave Hastinapur after the battle of Kurukshetra the Pandavas were reinstated in the throne and Yudhishthir Maharaj became the ruler of the entire earth planet and at that time uh, Krishna who had been away from Dwarka for quite some time was about to leave for Dwarka and at that time Mother Kunti approached Krishna who is Krishna what is the relationship between Mother Kunti with Krishna how many of you remember uh, very good uh, Kunti is the aunt of Krishna <coughs> King Surasen who was the king of the Jadu dynasty had a daughter and a son the son is Vashudev Krishna's father and the daughter was Queen Kunti and Vasudev had a cousin and also a very intimate friend called King Kunti Bhoj so Kunti Bhoj did not have any children so Vasudev actually assured him that his second child he would offer to him and since the second child was a daughter he offered that daughter to King Kunti Bhoj actually the name of this girl the name of this daughter was Pritha but because she was adopted by King Kunti Bhoj her name became also Kunti she was uh, popularly known as Queen Kunti mm, Kunti Devi very beautiful girl endowed with all kinds of wonderful qualities and when she was a little girl her father engaged her to take care of the guests that came to the, the important guests that came to his palace everybody can hear me those who are in the last row if you can't hear then why don't you tell me uh, I didn't think that you were that afraid of me <laughs> Hare Krishna is it better now Hare Krishna is it even better now Hare Krishna, <laughs> is it even better now? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> King Kunti Bhoj, you see there are different dynasties, like Jadu is one dynasty, Bhoj is one dynasty also, uh, the Bhoj dynasty. Uh, so Kunti Bhoj was from the Bhoj dynasty therefore he was known as Kunti Bhoj and so Kunti little girl was engaged in taking care of the guests and one day a very powerful and a personality known for his anger Durbasa came there how many of you know Durbasa? Uh, Durbasha? Uh, Durbasha Muni? So Durbasha Muni came to the palace of King Kunti Bhoj, became his guest. And as I told you, 
like he was famous for his anger. Like he would, you remember what he did to King Ambarish? Uh, how many of you remember what Durvasha did to King Ambarish, Ambarish Maharaj? Oh, so many of you don't know. So how many of you know, want to know what he did? And how many of you don't care? <laughs> uh, those who did not raise their hands. <laughs> okay. Ambarish Maharaj observed this vow of Ekadasi for one year. And one aspect of observing Ekadasi is to break the fast at a specific time. And that is called Paran, breaking the fast at a specific time. And in the meantime, Durbasha came there. And the king requested, please go and take your bath and uh, we'll arrange, in the meantime, we'll arrange for your prasad. We'll arrange for your, because they also observed Ekadasi. So we'll arrange for your breakfast. And now Durvasha went to uh, take bath and didn't come back for a long time. And the price, the, the time of Paran was uh, passing by, about to pass by. So the priests, the advisors, the ministers and other brahmanas advised King Ambarish that he can just break his fast taking a drop of water, just taking a little water. So when he was just about to take water uh, or took water, Durvasha came and he became angry like a ball of fire. You invite me to take prasad in your house and even without feeding me you are eating, you are breaking your fast. So everyone tried to uh, pacify Durbasha, but he was totally um, uncontrollable. So then <coughs> Durbasha became so angry, he uh, picked up a tuft of hair and smashed it on the ground in order to uh, harm a, a demon appeared to attack Ambarish Maharaj. So when that happened, then Sudarshan Chakra came. Not only took care of the demon, now the Sudarshan Chakra was about to take care of Durbasha also. <laughs> so that is what happens when one commits a Vaishnava Parad. No matter how powerful one is, uh, Vaishnavas are protected by the Sudarshan Chakra. Uh, so now this Sudarshan Chakra now is attacking Durbasha and Durbasha now ran for his life. He went everywhere. He went to heavenly planet. He went to he went to hellish planet. He was running everywhere and Sudarshan Chakra is chasing him. He had mystic power so he could run at a faster speed than Sudarshan Chakra. Uh, and, uh, but no one could give him protection. Then finally he went to Lord Brahma. Brahma said, please forgive me, I can't do anything. He went to Lord Shiva and said, I'm sorry. Uh, so then finally, Durvasha went to Vaikuntha and told Narayan. Narayan said, look, I also can't do anything. You go back to Ambarish Maharaj, to whom you have committed the offense. It's only he who can save you from this dangerous situation. So he went back to Ambarish Maharaj, begged forgiveness. And what was Ambarish Maharaj's response? Amrish Maharaj is responsible, it's all right, don't worry. You didn't commit any offense. This is the nature of a Vaishnava. 
all forgiving. And don't worry, everything is all right. And this is how, and then only the Sudarshan Chakra desisted and went back to Narayan's hand. So you can see this is how powerful Durvasha was. And whenever Durvasha came, everyone was afraid. You know what Durjodhan did? Uh, Durjodhan thought that he would use Durvasha to curse the Pandavas when they were in exile in a forest. So uh, one day uh, Durvasha came to Durjodhan and he treated him, Durjodhan treated him very nicely and then uh, Durvasha asked him, Oh, I'm so pleased with you. Tell me what can I do for you? Then Durjodhan said, Look, I am very fond of the Pandavas. <laughs> and I wish that you should hmm, uh, you should go and bless them also. And please go there at such and such time. Uh, that will be most auspicious for them. And what would be that time? When Draupadi also have eaten. When the Pandavas went to exile, uh, then the Brahmanas were accompanying them. Many, many Brahmanas were accompanying them. So their concern was, how am I going to feed all of them? We are in the forest. When we were the kings, when the Pandavas were the kings, they used to feed 16,000 Brahmanas every day. And you know how they used to be fed? On golden plates made of solid gold. And bowls, glasses, everything made of solid gold. In that way they used to treat them. But now overnight they lost everything. And the Brahmanas wanted to go with them. Where They said wherever we go we'll go with you. <laughs> then Yudhishthira Maharaj said that you know like uh, now we are just beggars. We are paupers. How am I going to, how am I going to treat you all? So <clears throat> They said, we don't care about eating. We are not going with you to eat. We are going, eat, we are going with you for your association. So, uh, don't worry about what we are going to eat. We are used to fasting. Uh, if nothing comes, you know, just patrang pushpang phalam toyam is all right with us. So, but at the same time, Yudhishthira Maharaj was concerned. So, he asked his spiritual master, Kanva Muni, uh, what should we do? So he said, look, all the, the source of all food is Surya Dev. So you pray to him. So then he prayed to Surya Dev. Surya Dev appeared and gave him one pot. And he said that uh, whatever is cooked in this pot, uh, you can serve endlessly. Uh, until uh, Draupadi ate because Draupadi would be the last one to eat so when Draupadi ate after that the pot will become empty so that is how uh, they were feeding all the Brahmanas that were there they were feeding them so and Duryodhana knew that and he knew at what time Draupadi would finish her lunch and then they won't have anything. And Durvasha would come there with his 64,000 disciples. <laughs> and <clears throat> then uh, the question will arise to feed, but they won't have anything to feed. So Durvasha will curse, curse them. And as a result of Durvasha's curse, Pandavas will be finished. So that was Durjodhan's plan. So you know what happened after that? How many of you know? And how many of you want to hear? 
and how many of you did not raise your hands? I'm watching. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, be enthusiastic in the class. Uh, don't be dummies. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so then, uh, Durvasha came at that specific time. Draupadi finished her lunch. And they were in big quandary, big anxiety. Now what to do? Durvasha came with 64,000 disciples. And so Durvasha said, uh, okay, I am. Uh, oh, yeah, Yudhishthir Maharaj did not realize that Draupadi already finished her lunch. He came at a time. So, Yudhishthir Maharaj told Durvasha, please go take your bath mm, and come for lunch. But when he inquired, he found that from Draupadi that she already ate. So, now Yudhishthir Maharaj is in a big anxiety what to do? So they, when they were in distress, what they did? How many of you know? Okay, that's good. They prayed to Krishna, 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 please save us from this situation. So Krishna came and Yudhishthira Maharaj told Krishna what happened. And Krishna said, look at the pot, if there is anything left, and they saw that uh, the pot was not washed as yet. So there was just one little grain of rice there sticking to the pot. Krishna will give it to me. So he took it and he belched of, out of satisfaction. And when Krishna belched, the whole world belched. <laughs> Durvasha with his 64,000 disciples started to belch. <laughs> That means they don't have any appetite left. They are fully satisfied. They won't be able to eat anymore. So Durvasha now is in anxiety. Yudhishthir Maharaj would make such arrangement for his prasad. And now they won't be able to eat anything. Now probably Yudhishthir Maharaj will curse him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Durvasha called his disciples. He said, look what, I don't know what's happening. We feel as if our stomach is filled up to the snake. We won't be able to eat anything. And now Yudhishthira Maharaj will make such elaborate arrangements for our eating. Uh, it will be so embarrassing for us. So let's not go back to Yudhishthira Maharaj. Let's just run away from here. <laughs> so from the river itself, they all ran uh, away. So this is, uh, these are few uh, anecdotes describing Judish, uh, Durbasha's character. So Durbasha became the, the guest of the King Kunti Bhoj. So King Kunti Bhoj um, appointed Kunti to take care of Durbasha. And Durbasha had a nature, he was Anyway, some characters are like that. Some characters are like that. Probably this is also Krishna's arrangement. Like uh, Durvasha would be so, so eager to find faults and curse. And Durvasha is actually an incarnation of Lord Shiva's destructive potency, Rudra. So he was uh, demanding all kinds of things from this little girl, asking for food at all odd hours. Uh, in the middle of the night, woke up. Uh, or he even thought that, let me see if that girl is war awake or asleep. She is attending me, she shouldn't sleep. Uh, and he went and found that she is wide awake, attending for. And as soon as Kunti saw, she so stood up and asked, Oh, Durbasha Muni, tell me what you need. And he demanded, I want this, this, this. So Kunti immediately went and prepared the everything and came. 
So this is how he served, she served Durvasha so nicely that Durvasha Muni was extremely pleased with him, with her. And while departing, Durvasha, who also knew what would actually happen to Kunti in future, so this is another quality of these sages. They can see what would happen in future. They, they are Trikala Darshi. They can see the past, they can see the present, and they can see the future. So knowing well what would happen to Kunti in future, I'll explain it afterwards. Durvasha Muni blessed her, gave her a boon that <clears throat> you can call any of the demigods to conceive a child from them. And she was a little girl, ah. so she got the boon, oh, I can call any demigod and get anything I want from them. She didn't understand uh, what, the, uh, the, what the gravity of this boon was. And playfully she looked out of the palace window and saw Surya Dev, the sun planet, so brilliant. And she knew that in sun planet, there is a sun god. So she playfully chanted the mantra, inviting sun god to come. And sun god came there. Who is the sun god? What's his name? King Vivashwan. So Vivashwan came and he said, look, you called me, so your desire will be fulfilled. You'll get a child. So then Kunti was very embarrassed. Said that, look, I'm, uh, I'm not married as yet. The sun God said, look, you called me. So my purpose of my coming is not going to go in vain. It will happen. You'll get a child. But your virginity will remain intact, don't worry. The child will be born through your ears. He'll come through your ear. And a child was born, a child came out. <coughs> From a little form that could come out through the ear hole, it grew right there into a full grown, to a baby, newborn baby. And he was, he was adorned with a natural armor and shield. And this beautiful little child. But Kunti was so worried and so embarrassed. Like if everybody gets to know that she got a baby, what will happen? So she put the baby on a basket and the palace was just on the bank of Jamuna in Hastinapur. So he, she let the child flow away in the river, praying to the Lord that he would take, he would protect him. And that was Karna, who was picked up by one Suta, a chariot driver called Adhirat. <coughs> and he brought up, he and his wife Radha brought up this little child uh, and he was known as Radheya because he was the child of Radha. Radheya. So, <coughs> So this is how Kunti uh, had her first son from Surya Dev. In due course of time, Kunti was married to King Pandu. Pandu hailed from the Surya dynasty. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Pandu uh, hailed from 
uh, uh, Kuru dynasty. It's actually the dynasty that hailed from Moon, not Sun. Uh, so he was the king of the Kuru dynasty. Kuru dynasty is also another very illustrious dynasty. As you all know, uh, there was a very famous king called Shantanu. Shantanu got married to Ganga Devi, Mother Ganges, the celestial river uh, that comes from the spiritual sky. And as a result of their uh, union, Bhishma was born, the grand sire. But Bhishma took a vow not to ever get married. And uh, then Vasudev, yeah, the family line uh, came to a uh, possible halt. You see, this is also another very amazing, and very amazing happening that when Kun, uh, uh, Shantanu was hunting in the forest, he came across uh, Satavati. A very powerful, very beautiful uh, woman who was actually the daughter of a fisherman, the daughter of the king of the fishermen, Dhivara Raj. And Satavati, uh, Santanu approached Satavati for marriage. So, the, her father, and she said, Look, you have to ask my father. So Shantanu went and asked uh, this uh, king of the fishermen, Dhibara Raj. And so he, say, he knew from the prediction or from astrological calculation by, made by the exalted sages that, the son, that this girl's son will become, or son will become kings. So knowing that, she told Shantanu that I can offer my daughter to you with a condition that her offspring, her children would become the king. Her children will become the king. So Shantanu said, look, I already have a son. And he is coronated as the crown prince. So then he refused, said, then, then, you can't, then I can't offer my daughter to you. So Shantanu came back, completely heartbroken. And Bhishma, whose name was Devavrata at that time, asked uh, his father, and they were very close, they were very intimate, they were practically together all the time. They were not only the father and son, they were more like uh, friends. And <clears throat> so Bhishma asked, what happened? Why are you, why you look so morose and sad? So he said, the father said that he didn't disclose anything, denied of anything being wrong. Then Devabrata went and asked the chariot driver, what happened? And the chariot driver then told what actually happened. So he asked the chariot driver, can you please take me to that place? So he went there and he asked, why aren't you offering your daughter to the king? And Dhivara Raj told him, why not? Why he couldn't offer his daughter? Because he wanted his daughter's child should be the king. And so he said, okay, fine. My father couldn't tell you or give you that assurance because I was there, I am his son. So I am relinquishing my claim on the throne. And uh, yes, your son, your grandson will become the king. So this Dhrivararaj, uh, he thought for a while and he said, 
Well, your children, you may not want to have your claim over the throne, but what about your children? So then Bhishma said, okay, then I'll not even get married if that is the uh, possible uh, threat. And it was such a terrible vow. And for a Kshatriya to, to take the vow of celibacy is practically impossible because they're always surrounded by beautiful women in living in such luxury, having such... And plus having a body which is so powerful, uh, it's very difficult for them uh, to maintain a vow of celibacy. So when Bhishma took the vow of celibacy, the demigods started to glorify him, saying, what a terrible vow, what a terrible vow this boy has taken. And that uh, sounded like, the word for that is Bhishma, Bhishma. What a terrible vow, what a terrible vow. And that's how he actually got the name Bhishma. Now, the Dhibara Raj wanted Satyavati's children to become the king. And in due course of time, Satyavati gave birth to two sons, uh, Ch Chitrangada and Bichitravirja. And both the sons died untimely. Uh, Chitrangada, the elder one, died while fighting with the Jakshas, headed by uh, a person also called Chitrangada. And he did not like that somebody with his same name is so, so famous. Because everybody was glorifying Chitrangada, but it was not him, the Chitrangada. It was some other Chitrangada, a human being, Chitrangada. So he became very upset. And he came and told him, challenged him. He said, look, it's not fair that two Chitrangadas are there. There should be only one Chitrangada. Uh, so let's fight. And a terrible fight ensued. They fought for a long, long time. Uh, and at the end, Chitrangada died. The son of Shantanu. Then when he died, Bichitra Virja became the king. And he was a little boy. So it is also a custom that when one ascends the throne, he should be married. So he was, and Bhishma got to know about three girls. Uh, Amba, Ambika and Ambalika, three daughters of the king of Kashi. And these three daughters were actually the incarnations of Durga. So Bhishma wanted them to be married to Bichitra Virja. Anyway, so Bhishma, and that's another story. Mahabharata is full of exciting anecdotes. So, uh, anyway, uh, Amba refused by saying that she already gave her heart to somebody else, Shalwa. So, when Bhishma got to know that she already gave her heart to somebody else, uh, he said, okay, go, you go and uh, marry him. But when she went to Shalva, Shalva refused to accept her. He said, do you think I'm a beggar? I'll take somebody's charity? Oh, go get married to Shalva. <laughs> Actually, Shalva fought with Bhishma and he was defeated. So he could not accept the humiliation of that defeat and uh, so he refused Amba. He said, go. Uh, he has claimed you, so... He should marry. So then Amba went back and told Bhishma. And Bhishma said, look, I think I have taken a vow of celibacy. I have taken a vow not to ever get married. I am sorry. Then Amba said, look, when you pick me up on the chariot, you held me by my hand and pulled me into the chariot. That was an indication that you, you accepted me. Uh, Bhishma said, I'm sorry. 
So then Amba uh, went back to her grandfather who was performing austerities in the forest and said, look, this is what happened. Please do something about it. Please urge him. Please make him marry me. Then he said, okay, you see, Parshuram is Bhishma's guru uh, and he is my friend. So Parshuram will be coming here soon. So I will request him. Bhishma may not listen to my request, but he will uh, listen to his request. So Parshuram came and he said, and Parshuram said, don't worry, uh, I'll tell him to get married. So he went and told Bhishma, Bhishma, get married to this girl. Bhishma said, Gurudev, you know that I have taken a vow. He said, Thik hai. <laughs> you have taken a vow, but I am telling you, so it should be all right. You can break your vow on the order of your spiritual master. Bhishma said, no, I am sorry, I can't. Uh, said, you are not going to accept my over words, my order? Bhishma said, yes. Uh, if your order is not uh, appropriate and befitting, uh, then that order can be refused. <laughs> Parshuram became very angry. He said, come fight with me. So they fought, fought for a long time. Parshuram, who is an incarnation of the Lord, who is a Shaktavish avatar, uh, who wiped out all the Kshatriyas from the planet, from this planet for 21 times, now he is, he cannot defeat Bhishma. Uh, so, <clears throat> who was taught by him, who was his disciple. So then at some point, Parshuram told, uh, Bhishma, I am very pleased with you. Ask for any boon. While fighting, they said, ask for any boon. So Bhishma said, if you are pleased with me, then stop fighting. <laughs> So that is how their fight ended and Parshuram told Amba, look, you know, you saw, like I tried my best but I didn't succeed, uh, so please excuse me. So then huh, in utter despair, what did Amba do? Amba entered into fire with a vow, with a desire to kill Bhishma, to be the cause of Bhishma's death. And as a result of that, she was born as the son of Drupada, known Shikhandi, who was who actually became the. No, he didn't kill. Bhishma, but he became the cause of Bhishma's death. <clears throat> so anyway, so King Vichitra Virja uh, got married to Ambika and Ambalika, these two daughters of Kashi Raj, the king of Kashi. And he became so absorbed in uh, enjoying with them that his body started to wear off and he, de he developed uh, tuberculosis, thysis, which is called Kshairog. Uh, the body wears out. <coughs> and so Vichitravirja died. Now see, this Dhivararaj wanted his grandson, grandchildren to be the king. Now, as a result of that, Bhishma took a vow that he will not uh, get married. And these two grandchildren are now dead. And in the family, there is no successor. So, uh, and Bhishma is the only successor, but he took a vow that he will not have any claim on the throne. He won't have any claim on the throne and he won't ever get married. So Satavati uh, approached Bhishma, Bhishma, said the Bhishma do something to have a progeny in the family. 
So Bhishma declined. He said, no. Satavati even requested that in the womb of these sisters-in-law, uh, you get the children. I am your mother. I am asking you to do that. But Bhishma declined. Uh, it is a custom. It is uh, one of the cust customs in the Vedic culture uh, called Devarena Sutatpatti. Procreating, produce, begetting children by the brother's brother-in-law. A woman, a widow, if she doesn't have a child, can have a child through the devar or uh, the brother-in-law, the brother of her husband. And <clears throat> but these things have been forbidden in the age of Kali. Uh, four things. Is it four or five? Have been forbidden in the age of Kali. What are those? Uh, Ashamedham, Gabalabdham, Sannasa, Palapaitrikam, Devarena Sutatpatti, Kalo Pancha Bibarjayat. Five. These five things are forbidden in the age of Kali. Uh, what are they? Uh, Ashamed and Gomed Jagya. Horse sacrifice and Cow sacrifice have been forbidden in the age of Kali. Sannas, uh, accepting the order of Sannas. But then the question is, Maharaj, you are saying forbidden, <laughs> but you yourself are a Sannasi. Yeah, Prabhupada made it clear. The Sannas that has been forbidden in the age of Kali is the Ekadandi Sannas, not Three Dandi Sannas. Uh, Three Dandi Sannas means Sannas for the sake of pure devotion to the Lord. That has not been forbidden. So, <clears throat> that is the thing in the age of Kali. Uh, sannas. Then, uh, Ashramedham, Gabalabdham, Sannasa, Palapoitrikam. Like offering meat in the Shraddha ceremony of the departed soul. Uh, that is forbidden. And Devarena Sutatpatti, procreating, producing children by the brother-in-law. Anyway, so Bhishma declined. Then Satyavati consulted with Bhishma and told him, look, you have another half-brother. And that is Vasudev. And she narrated the whole incident. So this Vasudev is, uh, was invited to procreate in the womb of Ambika and Ambalika. And as a result of that, uh, Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidura were born. So Dhritarashtra was born blind in the womb of Ambika. Uh, Pandu was born in the womb of Ambalika through Vasudev and in the womb of a maidservant, maidservant Vidura was born. Anyway, so this is how uh, these three children, uh, Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidura were born. Dhritarashtra was, bl was blind, therefore he couldn't ascend the throne. Therefore, Pandu became the king. And Pandu got married to uh, two princesses, uh, Kunti and Madri. And Dhritarashtra got married to Gandhari. Um, Gandhari, uh, the daughter of the king of Gandhar. So Gandhar is today's Kandahar in Afghanistan. That part used to be a part of India those days, 5,000 years ago. So Kunti, <coughs> or rather Pandu, was uh, by accident, he killed a sage who was 
in the act of copulation with his wife, but both of them assume the form of a deer and a doe. And thinking that this was a deer, Pandu shoot an arrow and kill the deer, but then when it was struck by the arrow, it assumed his human form. And while dying, he cursed Pandu that if you ever indulge in sexual act, you will immediately die. So as a result of that curse, Pandu left home. Because as I said, like to live in the uh, atmosphere of a palace and maintain a vow of celibacy is very, very difficult. It's practically impossible because there are so many provocations. Uh, and uh, so he went to the forest with his two wives. And at one time, uh, Pandu suggested to Kunti that you have some children through these, through some of the sages, through one of the sages. They are in the Himalayas, as a, living with the saintly personalities, the sages. So Kunti refused that proposal. He said, no, I can't have children from somebody else. <coughs> then when Pandu kept on insisting, then Kunti then told him that actually uh, I had a boon from King Sage Dudvasha that I can call a demigod and get a child. So then Pandu said, okay, uh, then you call Dharmaraj, Jamraj, because Jamraj is known for his noble character. He is uh, the judge, the supreme judge. Uh, so he is uh, the upholder of Dharma. So he, and as a result of that, Yudhishthir Maharaj was born. Uh, so Pandu actually considered that the king must be just. And that's why, thinking that his son would become king in due course of time, he invited Dharmaraj first. And then he considered that the king must be protected by a very powerful person. So he requested Kunti to get a powerful son. Now who is the most powerful of all demigods? Uh, Pavandev. And as a result of that, Bhima was born. And then he considered that he should have a great warrior as the son. Uh, and they invited Indra, the king of the demigods. And then uh, Arjun was born. So these three children were born uh, out of celestial personalities. Demigod. Then Pandu said, have another son. Kunti said, I had enough. Three is enough. But she thought that Madri, uh, so Pandu actually said, why don't you teach this mantra to Madri? So that she can also have a child. So Kunti said, okay, I will teach her on a condition that only once she will be able to chant this mantra and invite a demigod. So, Madri thought, I can use the mantra only once, so let me call the personality who is one yet two. That is Ashwini Kumar. And as a result of that, she got two children, Nakul and Sahadev. So these five personalities appeared as the children of the demigods and they are known as the Pandavas. Uh, so Kunti Devi uh, became known as the mother of the Pandavas. 
Why? Because remember Pandu had the curse. Now one day in springtime, uh, springtime is considered to be the time of Cupid that arouses um, the sexual desires in the hearts. So the f atmosphere becomes very beautiful, the flowers bloom at that time and the air carries the fragrance of the flower. The whole atmosphere, even that, um, everything becomes so attractive, so pleasing. So Pandu was there in the forest with Madri on the, up in the Himalayas. So at that time he became overwhelmed with the urge seeing the beauty of Madri. Madri tried to stop him but she couldn't and as a result of that Pandu died. So when Pandu died, both Kunti and Madri decided to go with him, become Sati. Uh, this is also another custom in the Vedic culture, but it's a voluntary custom, no force, no pressure. Uh, so both of them wanted to follow him after, after his death, entering into the funeral pyre. So Kunti's argument was, Kunti's claim was, I am uh, the principal queen, so I should go with him. But Madri said, look, uh, I, it, one of us have to be alive to take care of the children. And you have the three sons, I have two. So your responsibility to take care of the children is greater than mine. And it is because of me that he left his body, he died. So his desire uh, remained unfulfilled. Therefore, I need to go with him to fulfill his desire. So these arguments uh, were uh, undefeatable. Uh, so Kunti let Madri go. So we can see that they voluntarily wanted to go with the husband. They were competing, no, I want to go, no, no, I want to go. So then uh, Madri actually became a Sahamrita, uh, followed her husband while Kunti stayed on and uh, took care of the five children, becoming the mother of five. And she went through various difficulties uh, and so then finally uh, she is actually offering these prayers to Krishna. So this way, this is a very beautiful, these are very beautiful prayers. Prabhupada himself sung these prayers uh, in a beautiful way. Prabhupada got these prayers into a book called The Teachings of Queen Kunti. Through these prayers, Queen Kunti is teaching some lessons to us. Uh, and so we will discuss from the ver following the verses that are the prayers of Queen Kunti from tomorrow. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari. Now Prashadam in four minutes. I hope it is all set. Just see if they are ready. Very good. Mahaprasade Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnave Shalpa Punna Vatan Rajan Vishasha Naiva Jayate Sharira Avidha Jal Jarendriya Tahekal Jive Fele Bishayo Shagare Tar 
তার মধ্যে জিভাতি লোভময় সুদূর মতি তাকে যে তা কঠিন সংসারে কৃষ্ণ বর দয়াময় করিবারে জুভ সপ্রসাদ অন্ন দিল ভাই সেই অন্ন মৃত পাও রাধা কৃষ্ণ গুণ গাও প্রেমে ডাকো চৈতন্য নিতা প্রেমে ডাকো চৈতন্য নিতা হরে কৃষ্ণ হরে কৃষ্ণ 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 হরে 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 রাম হরে রাম 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 হরে 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 কৃষ্ণ হরে কৃষ্ণ 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 হরে 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 রাম হরে রাম 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 হরে হরে গৌর প্রেমানন্দে হরে শ্রী কৃষ্ণ প্রসাদ কি 